the spy mechanic is uh, kind of. Uh, off spy mechanics can incorporate a whole bunch of stuff. Where to put your chair, how to lift things right, um, your desk setup, how to use your computer, so on and so forth. So I'm not going to go all in depth to talk about everything, I'll tell you exactly how to sit or move or, or whatever. I'm going to talk about mainly three conditions, the three, um, the three things that most people that are in office settings can point at. Uh, and a little bit of why that kind of stuff happens, and then uh, obviously a little bit about uh, how you can help alleviate it or, or relieve it on your own, possibly even alleviate it. So, those, that's pretty much the goals to talk about the common problems, um, to describe the mechanisms that, that cause these problems, and then to talk about ways that you can improve your uh, work environment, especially if you're sitting sitting at a desk for a long period of time, that can help alleviate these <coughs> So, the three um, most common complaints that office workers have that are related to their actual work environment are um, one, the big one is headaches. Um, headaches, neck pain, it's all kind of the same thing. Um, Two, uh, lower back pain. Just everybody from time to time has some uh, kind of lower back pain. And then three, um, a lot of times, especially uh, from a lot of keyboard work, um, typing, writing, stuff like that, people get hand and wrist pain. Uh, okay, so the first one, headaches. Uh, two main reasons uh, why people get headaches that are related, again, to uh, office work or desk work. One is um, eye strain. Uh, if you're staring or concentrating for uh, long periods of time, your eyes will be strained you'll get, and you'll begin to get headaches. And then uh, two is uh, poor posture. Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, as, you're, as you begin to slouch and your head begins to, to fall over out of your shoulders, it's kind of like if you put a bowling ball on top of a broom handle, you can hold it up pretty easily. If you hold it straight up and down, but as you start leaning it forward, it becomes increasingly harder to kind of crank it back and that's what the back muscles, uh, shoulder muscles have to kind of do. They're, they're fighting to get your head back. They'll start to strain and fatigue um, and that'll lead to headaches. Um, lower back pain. So uh, it's generally caused from uh, prolonged sitting for long periods of time um, and it's exacerbated by uh, sitting with your chair at the wrong height, cross leg sitting, um, leaning to one side. A lot of people will uh, tuck one foot under under uh, one side and sit like that. Really bad for your back, especially if you're sitting for long periods of time. Uh, wrist pain uh, is generally caused, especially in office uh, situations, from repetitive motions, uh, typing, uh, a lot of writing, a lot of files, and doing a lot of things over and over and over and over and over again uh, with one hand. Um, and wrist pain can also manifest itself as uh, pain in the hand or even numbness or weakness. So now we'll kind of go back to headaches and go a little bit more in depth. Um, and then this is kind of the, the first version I talked about, uh, straining, looking at a computer screen for long hours. Um, what that ends up doing is it'll fatigue the muscles in your eyes. Um, the headache that you'll get from, from this type of situation is usually uh, in the eyes or at the temples. It can be one side or the other. Um, sometimes you may notice uh, your eyes start to get bloodshot, maybe even one more than the other. Um, how you relieve this, really, there's only one way. You want to avoid you know, rubbing your eyes or doing any of that kind of stuff. But what you want to do is take a break, look at something else, close your eyes, um, just stop from focusing on that one thing. Uh, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, maybe two minutes, and then you'll be able to go back to what you were doing. But if you're doing, if you're staring at something for eight hours a day without taking uh, a break uh, for extended period of time, your, your eyes are going to fatigue. Um, if it continues, you know, the optometrist, ophthalmologist, I just put that in there because um, basically you want to have your eyes checked. You want to, if, if this stuff is happening, uh, recurring, you're getting worse or anything like that, you want to see a professional, make sure your, your, uh, your vision is good and even between the two eyes. Um, poor posture headaches, um, and again, it's due from the muscle strain in the neck uh, and the shoulders. Uh, the tension will, will feel like it begins in the shoulders, comes up the neck. Uh, the headache typically wraps around the back of your head, 
um, and you'll get a uh, pain into the front of your head as well. Again, uh, the key is going to be to, instead of being in this position for you know, eight hours of time, just you know, every one or two hours, just get up, take a short break, walk around, just take the pressure off of those uh, back muscles. It'll take you 30 seconds, one minute, um, just get out of that position, then you go back to it. Um, a couple neck stretches. Actually, just, just one I gave you an example of. Um, what she's doing is stretching the right side of her neck. So she's taking her um, the opposite hand, putting it on the top of her head, and kind of pulling her head down. You don't want to just hold it in that position. You want to kind of use your breathing to ease the stretch. So you're going to start you know, in one position, and then as you go for 30 seconds to a minute, you ease your head down and down more, and you let the muscle actually relax. But the most important thing um, she's doing is she's sitting on her hand. So if you're sitting in a chair, you either sit on your hand or you pull on to the bottom part of the chair, and that stabilizes your shoulder. If you just pull your head over, your shoulder will come up with it. You won't be able to get a, a really good stretch. So if you sit on your hand or hold onto something, it'll stabilize the shoulder. You'll be able to get a real therapeutic stretch. That muscle will actually release um, and a lot of that tension will release. Um, um, self massage is real good. Um, and then again, if uh, you know the symptoms are, are continuing even with doing some of this stuff, uh, you always you want to get it checked out. Maybe a professional massage therapist. You've got you just feel like you're real tight in the upper back or have a lot of knots or something like that. Uh, okay, moving on to low back. Um, again, low back. Almost everybody has it to some degree. Um, it's among the most common medical conditions. It's, it's top three always in reasons why anybody visits any doctor for um, year after year. Uh, sitting uh, increases the pressure that's put on the disc. So from stand, standing, laying down, sitting is, is the worst for your back. And then if you sit and then slouch forward, uh, it, about, it doubles that amount of pressure. So sitting is worse than standing, but sitting slouched over is twice as bad as sitting. Um, and the, the tendency for anybody is to sit and start slouching more and more as time goes on. This is a, kind of a diagram of that. Obviously, the guy with the X by him is bad, and the guy with the check is good. Nobody ever has that posture for long, long periods of time. But there's two things that you can see in the, in the left um, diagram that really are the kind of the key points. One, the head is way far, far forward of the shoulder, so that puts a lot of strain on the neck and the shoulders. And then two, in the, the check um, diagram, the, uh, the mannequin has a curve, almost a reverse curve in his low back. That's good, and then uh, in the X version, it's almost rounding back the other way. And again, by doing that, you're putting a lot of strain on the front part of the spine, which is where the disc actually is. Um, broken record, but uh, changing positions is again the key just to get the pressure off of those structures. So getting up 30 seconds to a minute and just moving around. A lot of people don't think about this, but, but stretching the legs, especially the back of the leg and the hip, does a lot to relieve pressure on the lower back just because of where the muscle attachments are. If you stretch, keep your, your hamstrings, the back of your legs, and your hips stretched out, um, it'll relieve a lot of pressure on the lower back. Um, and then everybody should sit with some kind of low back support. It doesn't have to be you know, a, a special chair. It can be one of these chairs. Um, and you don't have to get a, a, you know, a specific support, but a rolled up towel is real good, um, or, or even a, a folded up pillow. What you want to do is make sure you get it about halfway up from your hips to your scapula, to your shoulder blades. So you want to about right about here. And it should almost feel like it's kind of pressing in, making your chest open up a little bit more. Um, almost to where it's an uncomfortable feeling. You'll, be, you'll begin to slouch, but you won't be able to go back to all the way like this. You'll slouch and it'll catch you. Um, Self-massage, obviously very good. Uh, a key point is anytime you have leg pain, pain that's shooting down the legs or, or radiating or any kind of numbness or tingling in the legs, you want to get that checked out professionally. You don't, want to, um, you don't mess around with that kind of stuff. Uh, that's something that you don't want to just change habits or anything. That, that needs to be looked at. And prolonged symptoms, obviously, you want to get that looked at. 